scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time reviewing Main Range release number 188, Breaking Bubbles and Other Stories. Every so often, Big Finish release a quartet, a two-disc set, a free and all money, consisting of four, or sometimes more, but usually four, mini-stories. They come in, because a disc can hold about 72 minutes, they come in at about 31 minutes each. Now, as a Doctor Who story on TV lasts about 42 minutes, you're looking at almost full-length modern Doctor Who tales. This latest release is particularly good. We've had things like 100 in the past, but that's fine. Here we're talking about breaking bubbles and other stories. We have old Sixie at the helm here. Now, we left the Sixth Doctor in the last trilogy with Flip, possibly or possibly not, making it out of that story in one piece. That story was several months ago, and it's not particularly a spoiler, because that would be more of a cliffhanger leading into the next trilogy. However, this isn't part of a trilogy. Historically speaking, Big Finish tried to release a Doctor Who main range story once every month. Except that's not quite true. Because there are 13 issues of Doctor Who magazine per year, somebody at the beginning decided to have 13 big finish releases, thus guaranteeing them coverage in every single issue with a main range release. This is perfectly fine until you come along and release other things under the radar, such as Night of the Triffids, which is coming very soon. I'm particularly excited about that. And Countermeasures and the fourth Doctor box sets. But in the beginning, there was only really some Bernice Summerfields and some main Doctor range. It wasn't even called the main range, it was just called the range, because that's all they kind of did. You have 13 Doctor Who stories. You have Doctors 5, 6, 7, 8, or 4. You've basically got 5 Doctors to play with. You give them trilogies, you can see where I'm coming, you've got one left over, and that's what they did with this. You've got 4 basic stories here. And by basic, I don't mean they're particularly badly written, because they are not. You have four. You have Breaking Bubbles by Liz Miles. And if you find episode 400, which I know was episode 364 of the Tin Dog podcast, but I wanted to celebrate early so that I could get everything recorded and out before the summer. I'm sure you'll forgive me. You have stuck with me for several hundred years at this rate. Breaking Bubbles. Now, the next one is called... Of Chaos Time The. Now that's by Mark Ravenhill. The third one, An Eye for Murder, written by Una Cormack. And the last one, The Curious Incident of the Doctor in the Night, by Nev Fountain. Familiar names, yes, especially the last one. But all four of them are particularly strong. Now, on the extras, Colin Baker does talk about a specific amount of time being allocated to record one main finish release. Say, for example, two days. Except here you have four stories, so the energy use is actually higher because you have to throw yourself into each individual tale. Are you getting less of a story because you have four individual and not connected tales? They are connected in the sense that they have a theme, but they aren't connected in the sense of a narrative. This isn't following on from Flip's departure, or possible non-departure. This is a completely separate tale. It does not affect the quest for Perry, if there's ever going to be one. These are standalone. If you've not experienced Big Finish at all, why not start here? Because they're not linked with any other story. It's the Sixth Doctor, the good audio Sixth Doctor, not the messed about with TV Doctor, who people have a love slash hate slash loathe relationship with. No, this is good old Colin. 
Colin and Nicola, beautiful pairing. They work so well on audio. And here they're working superbly. So what are the four stories about? Each of them are about perception in a certain way, how we see reality. Now, the first story, Breaking Bubbles, has a little bit of a next-gen Star Trek holodeck feel. It's a prison ship, but I don't really want to say any more than that. You can pick up all of that from the trailer. The Doctor and Perry land in a giant botanical garden, which happens to be on board a spaceship, which is a prison transport for an ex-empress. The Empress, of course, will want to escape, and much fun ensues. It's a beautifully crafted, incredibly well-written tale, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more from Liz in the future. Next up is a surprisingly interesting piece of narrative. I hate using the word timey-wimey almost as much as the War Doctor slash Ninth Doctor does, but it has to be said at this point, there's very few other ways of describing it. Mark Ravenhill has produced a story called Of Chaos Time The. It kind of gives you a hint about what's happening. I'll read from the release. Cast adrift in his own chronology, the Doctor must avert the consequences of a catastrophic experiment in using time as a weapon of war. Basically, you get two things which you don't normally get in a narrative here, and it's really, really well done you get to hear the Doctor's internal monologue. Now, you've not heard this on a Big Finish release for a long time, not since McGann was up climbing, I believe, a castle. And you're looking at a story that happened eight years ago for this. You don't get to hear the inside of the Doctor's head and his thought processes very often at all. The nearest you get is him talking to himself. But here you're actually in there, experiencing the the bluster as he tries to perceive what's going on and put things in some sort of order. Apparently, the script was so confusing when they first received it that there are notes on the script saying, first, read this script in this order, and that gives you the narrative, and then you can read it in the order that it's actually going to be broadcast. Because you can imagine things aren't happening in the right order. And that is perfectly fine. For one story, you really wouldn't want to get through an entire two-disc set like this. You'd end up with something like Flip Flop, only so much more complicated. Disc 2, or rather Story 3, is An Eye for Murder by Una McCormack. Now this one is lovely. It feels very much like one of the... It actually feels like the 8th Doctor Charlie story that was out um, in the last year as part of the celebration. A bit like a Companion Chronicle. You remember reviewing them. That's not important. What is important is that... Well, I'll read again from the release. The year is 1939... In the case of poison pen letters at St Ursula's College threatens to change the course of the Second World War. Fortunately, thriller writer Miss Sarah Perry is on hand to investigate. The beauty of this story isn't in the actual story, but in the way it's told. The basic storyline has one massive switch around, something that I am so surprised has never been done with Big Finish. Perry is the main thrust of the investigation. She is the main character. She is the person at the heart of the story. The Doctor even describes himself as Miss Perry's assistant. It's a woman's world and the Doctor is put in his place and for that this story works in spades. You so have to hear this story. To be honest you have to hear them all. They're all particularly well written. And that brings us to what for most people is the highlight of the entire story. But it could also be not. Let me explain. The story itself is called The Curious Incidents of the Doctor in the Night Time by Nev Fountain. Nev has yet to provide Big Finish with a duff script. The guy is particularly good. But of course, that's got a level of expectation. You might think that sounds a bit familiar as a title. Well, it does. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time is a classic book. Something that a lot of people have got on shelves. It's about an autistic kid and a dog across the road dying. He decides to investigate. And this is what it's about here. It's all told from the perception of Michael, who is a young boy who likes to solve mysteries, such as the mystery of the extra gnome, the mystery of the absent father, and the mystery of the strange man in yellow trousers at the bottom of his garden. That is all you need to know. Yes, there are similarities with this story and the book, 
let's face it, it's nodded to to such an extent that it's in the title. But this actually, well, I've read the other book now, and this has got more heart, more humour, and yet treats the concept of autism with passion and respect that sometimes you just wouldn't get. It's a tremendously powerful piece, but it's also pure Doctor Who. And although it's got its roots firmly embedded in the other story, the thing that it reminded me most of is, and I hate to be the one to say this out loud, love and monsters. No, no, don't turn off. The narrative speaking is someone with emotional issues. Something happens with his parents. He needs help. The doctor enters his life. It has the feel and the essence of all of the great bits of love and monsters without any of that tedious messing about. But even then, the monsters in this story are ludicrous to such an extent that they belong in the 1980s Doctor Who universe. If this had been on screen, people would hate this story. If it had been out when they were children. But listen to it. It says a lot. And you'll be grateful you did. So with that, I'll play the trailer and speak to you all very soon, probably about Doctor Who. Be seeing you. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. Doctor Who. Breaking bubbles and other stories. May I ask how you got here? Oh, the usual way. Which is? We landed. In a spaceship? That's right. There's been an internal security breach. Where? Prisoner's cell. It's been locked. What you do that? No idea. Ah! My jailers have arrived. Oh, they don't sound very friendly. Please tell me that doesn't mean they're going to shoot us. I'm terribly sorry. The bomb's through there. Bomb? If I only had really? some idea what she was talking about. Ah. Did you stop the launch? Afraid not. <laughs> If I can work out what's wrong with him, maybe I can work out what's wrong with me. Doctor, say something! Oh, no. Doctor! There's a choice coming for all of us. You don't want to pick unwisely. I have made my choices. I'll live with some. Do you still have a drawing of this artifact, at least? Here, this is what the artifact looks like. Ew, oh. that's creepy. Hello. Uh, hello. My name is not Johnson, in case you're wondering. Okay. It's Michael Andrew Jennings. Oh, right. Madam, prepare yourself for a shock. We intercepted a message beamed from this location. It's broadcast on a frequency used by an alien life form which closely resembles... Did you tell anyone at work about the gnomes? No, Dad, you said not to. Are you trying to break out of my dad's shed? No. Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com. On Saturday, August the 30th, at the Derby Inn Quad, Hooverville 6 will take place. Guests include Peter Davison. David Troughton, Michael Troughton, making an exceptionally rare appearance together, producer Derek Sherwin, and musical maestro Dominic Glynn, Terry Davros Malloy, and Deborah Watling, and Sinead Michael, from Series 5 of Sarah Jane Adventures. And as always, a gaggle of podcasters and merchandise dealers' room. Tickets are priced between £10 and £40. Visit the Derby Quad website for more details and to order tickets. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its connected properties are copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Hoostrology, a time traveller's almanac, is available through Telos Publishing or Amazon. Visit www.hoostrology.com for further information. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.